Right, so um, this is the rest of the parent functions of lesson 3.1. So this is video number two. So we're now at the inverse square um, parent function, which is y equals 1 over x squared, or 1 divided by x squared. Um, once again, the domain can't be 0, because you can't have 0 in the denominator, so all reals, except x cannot equal 0. And because x can't equal 0, the value of this fraction is never going to be 0. So once again, y cannot be 0. So all reals, except y cannot equal 0. So the asymptotes, um, again, because x and y can never be 0, you're going to have asymptotes there. So um, the x-axis, once again, is the horizontal line y equals 0. And the x-axis is the vertical line um, x equals 0. Symmetries. Uh, this inverse square is reflection symmetric over the y-axis. And therefore, it is an even function. There is no min or max because it's approaching the x-axis. It's getting very close to zero for the min, and it's going to infinity for the max. So there is not a min or a max. There is no y-intercept because there's asymptotes. And there is no x-intercept because of the asymptote. And when I am trying to remember the difference between these graphs um, and these equations, I know that for a fraction, that a positive over a positive is, um, I mean, one divided by a positive is a positive. So I know that for this graph, I'm going to have my curve in the upper right. And if I divide by a negative, I'll get a negative. So it'll be negative, negative. And since this quadrant is positive, positive, I have my curve here. And this quadrant is negative, negative, I have my other curve here. And then for the inverse square, I remember they're both up top because x squared is always greater than 0. So all of the graph is above the axis the x-axis specifically. And so therefore, when I'm remembering the difference between these two graphs, I know that they look similar because they both have the two curves. And the inverse square has the two curves both above. And then the inverse variation is the fraction uh, 1 divided by. This is going to be the curve up here, like I said, positive. 1 divided by a positive is a positive. And 1 divided by a negative is a negative. All right, so now let's look at Lesson Master 3.1. And 1 through 4, function f is described by an equation. Give equations for any asymptotes of the graph. Um, notice that our asymptotes come from places where our denominator is undefined, where our denominator can't be 0. So we can determine if there's an asymptote based on the fact that if there's a denominator that has a variable in it. So let's look at this first denominator, x plus 2. Well, since we don't want to have 0 in the denominator, we want x plus 2 to not equal 0. So when I solve that equation, subtract 2 from both sides, x is not allowed to equal negative 2. Well, since x can't equal negative 2, we need to put an asymptote at negative 2. Because otherwise, if it was negative 2, we'd have a 0 in the denominator. Well, if the denominator can't be 0, the value of the whole function will never be 0. So y equals 0 will also be an asymptote. Because an automatic result of the denominator not being 0 means that y will also not be 0. Therefore, we have an asymptote there. 
So just want to clarify, because it can't equal something, we have to put an asymptote there. So even though it says x equals negative 2, that's going to be a dotted line on the graph that it's not actually going to touch. All right, let's look at number 2. And number 2, um, our denominator is 2x minus 1. And so that cannot equal 0. Well, let's go ahead and solve for x. Therefore, x cannot equal a half. So we're going to have a denominator where x cannot equal 1 half. All right, now in this one, we can have 0 in the denominator, but because there is a variable in the numerator, we could end up with 0 in the numerator. So the value of the whole function could be 0 um, if the numerator ended up being 0. So we're not going to have an asymptote this time at y equals 0. And I did not mean to put a not equal to something. I'm sorry if that confused things. That should be equals a half because that's where, that's what the asymptote is. All right, let's go to number 3. In number 3, um, the denominator, x minus 4, we can't let that equal 0. So if x minus 4 can't equal 0, that means x can't equal 4. So I have to have an asymptote there. Um, now, I could have a 0 in the numerator. Um, and that would be okay, and that would give the value of the function to be zero. So y is allowed to be zero in um, number three as well. All right, let's look at number four. Um, x squared minus four cannot equal zero. Therefore, x squared can equal four. And when I solve for that, I'm going to take the square root. Now, because I took the square root, that means that the x cannot equal plus or minus 2, because the positive root of 4 is um, 2, and the negative root is negative 2. So I'm going to have two asymptotes, one at x equals 2, and one at x equals negative 2. And because I don't have a variable on top, I just have 3, and the new denominator will never be zero. The value of this function will never be zero. Therefore, y equals zero is an asymptote because y can't equal zero. All right, let's look at our next question. It says, if a graph has exactly one horizontal asymptote at y equals 23 and exactly one vertical asymptote, at x equals 18, at what point might you center the screen to see the graph on your calculator? Well, I would center it at the point 18, 23, because I'm going to have an asymptote. I'm just going to kind of show you a little sketch. At 18, I would have an asymptote. Let's say that this was 18. That would be an asymptote. And at 23, I'd have an asymptote. And so right here could be the center of my graph, which would be the point 18, 23. Right, down here in 6 through um, 11, we're going to match the graph with its parent function. All right, so number 6, I remember that that's that square root. It looks kind of like the square root symbol. And so that's my letter B. Number seven is a line, which is my letter E. Number eight is a quadratic, so the parent function is F. Number nine um, is my one divided by X, because I've got my curves in my top and my bottom quadrants. So that's my... Letter A, there's my V, my absolute value V, which is D. And this is my cubic function, which would be letter um, C. And that's it for uh, parent functions, 3.1.